Hello, Internet. Welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Generation 1. In the last episode, we got through the Safari Zone and got the HMs for both Surf and Strength, as well as catching our newest team member, Tauros, who looks a bit goofy in this game, but he's doing his best. And speaking of doing Tauros' best, between episodes, this recording is just me gambling and uh, using items on Pokemon. Uh, and I'm doing this between episodes because we actually ran out of storage space in the PC. So I had to throw out a bunch of items and, you know, I'm not throwing out vitamins, so I'm just going to use them while I got them. For the defense stat for Annabelle. Carbos. That is for speed. Gaster would be the natural choice for speed. Gaster or Lamp. But... I think I want to give it to Tauros. Protein will also go on Tauros. And these two HP ups will both go on, uh, well, one will go on Yumi. This one will go on Hikat. Now it's gambling time. I hate everything. <laughs> Okay, I literally just sent a message in the Discord that I typically send messages in while I'm doing stuff like this. I said, I don't understand how slots are meant to be addictive. This is genuinely just infuriating. And then as soon as I sent that, I went back to the slots, and guess what? Triple seven lined up. Three hundred coins. <laughs> we are so back. This is awesome. I love gambling. I love slots. <laughs> oh, that's satisfying. You know what? I get it. I get why everyone's moving to kick. I understand. It's embarrassing as I still haven't broken even from when I started grinding this. Hold on. Wait. I think I gotta keep going now. <laughs> that was like four wins in a row. Small wins, but like... That was still... Holy shit. This has to be it. This has to be it! Come on. This is ridiculous. Come on! Holy shit! Holy shit! Oh my god. I'm almost a five. I'm <laughs> just past 500 coins. I was at seven. This has to be super lucky mode. This is so satisfying. I get it, man. I get it. <laughs> I'm past 800. Oh. Well. I was past 800. We'll get back. Something tells me if I was in super lucky mode, I no longer am. Taking my first break of the night at 1,617 coins. It has been like an hour. I got very lucky with super lucky mode a couple times, but Jesus Christ, man. This is one-fifth of what I need for one of the two prizes I want. And I'm only going for one of them right now. <laughs> Fuck. So, I haven't talked much about Astrid's playthrough of this game. But, 
There's something Astrid used on her team that, frankly, is gonna have saved me so much trouble. Faye used Porygon. <laughs> the methods that they went through to get this Porygon are none of my business. All I know is, by getting it in this trade, I will never have to gamble again. <laughs> Goodbye, Tauros. I'll see you again soon. <laughs> Porygon, the virtual Pokémon, a Pokémon that consists entirely of programming code, capable of moving freely in cyberspace. Also wrongfully blamed for crimes that were committed by Pikachu. So, while I'm, you know, doing all this, I think now would be a pretty appropriate time to go ahead and teach Tauros a move that we only have access to thanks to simultaneously playing through Pokémon Yellow. We'll go ahead and trade Charizard into Pokémon Blue since we need to register it in the Pokédex there anyway. And Tauros. While I'm messing around with Link Cable stuff, I figure now is the most sensible time to do this. That's a good sprite in Pokémon Yellow. Looks a lot less, like, shady than it does in Red and Blue. Meanwhile, Charizard's sprite is bad in both games. Poor guy. You may recall TM-08, a TM we got on the SSN. This TM contains, without a doubt, the... tied for best normal-type move in the game, Body Slam. This move is pretty important for Tauros, and while I feel a little weird using it from Pokémon Yellow to teach it to a Pokémon I'm using in Pokémon Red, genuinely, I just don't think Tauros will be as fun to use without access to this. Consider all this between episodes stuff, just working to make sure Tauros is going to be, like, excellent and fun to use right from the start. Back to this goofy-looking sprite for Tauros. I am... <laughs> I am literally so close. Is that only ten coins away? close. We are so close. Literally just one triple bar, one triple seven. Literally even just triple cherries would not quite get us there, but anything else, triple anything other than cherries, will get us there. We are so close. Oh. I've had enough goes! <laughs> okay, let me just check my notes to make absolutely sure I'm getting the right one. TM15. Hyper Beam. What? That's it? You're not gonna give me any dialogue? Okay. I feel weirdly ripped off. can't entirely put into words how happy I am to see this. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Please, dear god, if- if you are going to get the TM for Hyper Beam, just cheat in the coins. D d you don't need to- <laughs> Oh, it was satisfying getting super lucky mode, but trust me, gambling takes way more time than it's worth. My playtime in this save file went from like 26 hours to 30 hours. Granted, I was playing in three times speed almost the entire time, but still. Just, just cheat. But either way, we have the TM for Hyper Beam now. 
Which is one of the strongest moves in the game. And yeah, that's going on Tauros. I basically want Tauros to be just an explosive force right off the bat, even without getting levels that realistically he needs to keep up with the rest of the team. Hyper Beam is going to make Tauros into an absolute monster as far as, like, this game goes. I was gonna say this early in the game, but no. That's powerful even in the late game. Anyway, this time, our real plan is to see what we can do now that we have access to the Surf and Strength HMs. For the Strength HM, we've already seen everything we can do with it at the moment. It was just that one boulder in that man's house. Oh, I already talked to this guy. Yeah, you should have cashed in your coins, man. Okay, there is this pond here in Celadon City. There's not things to do at every body of water we've seen, so we aren't gonna have to do this the entire video, but... There are things across bodies of water that we have access to now. Hello there! Hello there! I've seen you, but I never had a chance to talk! Here's a gift for dropping by! TM41. If I'm correct, I believe this is the TM for Softboiled. Yep. This is a move that can only be learned by both Chansey and Mew, and it restores 50% of their maximum HP with no drawback. It can also weirdly be used outside of battle to sacrifice 20% of the user's HP to heal that amount of uh, whatever other party member you want's HP. It's weird and not really something you would ever have a reason to use when you can just go to a Pokemon Center or use a potion, but it's an option if you're doing like a challenge run where you aren't allowing healing items. But that also implies in that challenge run, you just happen to be able to get Chansey or Mew. So, I don't know. It's situationally useful. Maybe you are using Chansey. Chansey's genuinely really good in Gen 1, but... I don't know. It's just a little dubious. Our next destination is here in Lavender Town. And this house specifically. The Happy House of Lavender Town, as I've probably called it in the past. There were some... Excellent suggestions for Tauros's nickname, and I think only giving like two days to give nickname suggestions may have contributed. Here are some of the honorable mentions. Later Gator to you showed Gex-like consistency with the nickname suggestion Gex. You know what I like about Gex? Consistency. This nickname suggestion came before I even caught Tauros, so like I respect the dedication. <laughs> Green Cobra's gaming suggested Rhino, but with a Y to make it special, and while Tauros isn't in any way a rhinoceros, in a weird way, I still understand what he was going for. Other suggestions from him were Tailspin or Tails, since it has multiple tails, or Francis to be random. I really considered Tailspin, because it reminded me of this Game Boy game we owned when I was a kid. I have no idea what it was, because I never played it, and I have no idea where it went. Returning champion Pancake Armorman suggested Chuck, since Taurus' Paldean form introduced in Starlet and Violet is a fighting type, and there's sort of a double meaning there with ground beef, which is just a little too dark and on the nose. That's, that's like a step away from naming him Burger, but I do appreciate the wordplay. <laughs> After a long debate amongst themselves, the entire council at Game, the collab channel, decided King Bob from Minions would be the most fitting namesake for Tauros. I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment. I remember seeing the first Minions movie with my mom for some reason, despite neither of us really wanting to see it, and it was an okay movie, but I don't remember anything about it particularly well. Speaking of my mom, probably not her, it was her, suggested Wayne and Jason about two hours after the deadline at two in the morning. Tyler Creative on YouTube suggested Rush, which is a very simple name, but one that fits Tauros very well. Tauros is sort of the Legends Arceus Paris of Scarlet and Violet, so I know full well how Tauros rushes. In the Discord server, I got a lot of good nickname suggestions. Cosmo suggested Noxos, Rhodes, Crete, and Lesbos if I wanted to be silly, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of those, they're all Greek. These are all islands in the Aegean Sea, and the King of Crete is the one who, every nine years, made King Aegeus pick seven boys and seven girls to be sent to Daedalus' labyrinth to be eaten by the Minotaur, which is half man, half bull. 
Muddy suggested Bovis, which is derived from bovine and is hopefully coincidentally also part of the name of bovine tuberculosis. Lucy suggested Asterion, who was the A King of Crete, but not the King of Crete who I talked about earlier in the section. And Night Emerald recommended Betsy, Wanda, Terry, Forte, which are just kind of generic cow bull names. Jim Scrimble, which reminds me of uh, Jeff Scrungle from Salty DK Dance Toilet and Wonderland playthrough. And Minos. Minos, 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 I I don't know. I, I never even got a like consistent pronunciation for this name in school, but... Uh, Minus was the king of Crete who made King Aegean send, send children into the labyrinth, and I was between both Minus and Forte for a while, actually. I really like both names, with Minus being about as direct as you can get to the myth of the Minotaur, and Forte sounding nice and also being a nice nod to the fact that Tauros is just generally a really well-rounded and powerful Pokémon. But the name I'm going with... After briefly saying Tauros looks homophobic, which I sort of understand in a weird way with its sprite in this game. Estra News suggested Ryan, and look, I love Xenoblade. Xenoblade 1 is definitely not in my top five favorite games like the other two are, but I still absolutely love it, and the reason I've decided on this name... Okay, it's because it made me think of Ryan's immaculate drip in Xenoblade Definitive Edition, and if you've watched my LP of that game, I'm sorry, but also, you know how I feel about Ryan's resort style. I've been pumping my guns. <laughs> he gives the view of his fucking watch. <laughs> that fucking watch is so funny. On top of that, it gives me an excuse to say, RUN TIME, BABY, a whole lot. So, yes, I would like you to give Tauros a nicer name. Because you know what? <laughs> You can't have a rainbow without Rhyme, baby! Okay, this Pokémon has been renamed Rhyme! That's a better name than before! Rhyme is better than... <laughs> that seems mean to say. <laughs> no, I can't actually go through with saying that. I like Tauros. He hasn't really been a team member for long, but I'm already attached because now he's nicknamed. Okay. I am going to say now that this is not the last thing in the series that I'm going to be asking for viewer input for. But anything else I want input for will be solely in the Discord server, because, jeez, it is hard to manage taking suggestions in three places at once. Our next destination is down here on Route 12, but I don't actually know how- well, never mind, I do know how far south, it's just this far south. Wanna go ahead and use Surf here. This is just below Lavender Town, by the way. TM16. I don't know what this TM is. Payday. Uh, this is a very weak move that gives you a very small amount of money at the end of the battle if you win. Uh, this move is interesting because it's one of the only things that could get you out of the softlock with the safari zone. But you need surf to get it, so you need trades to get it, and that... I don't know. That's cheating to get out of a soft lock in Gen 1. I accidentally walked into the old man who can be used for the Mew glitch. There goes the third Mew. This is a funny debut battle for Tauros, though. Sure. I meant to go back up to hit Body Slam, which, by the way, I also traded Tauros to Pokemon Yellow to use that game's Body Slam TM. I forgot to mention that earlier. It feels a little, like, cheaty to use it because we already used our Body Slam TM, but... I mean... Tauros just wouldn't be the same without access to it. If we used Hyper Beam, that would have knocked out. You saw there that Hyper Beam doesn't have to recharge if it knocks out an opponent in Gen 1, which is pretty much what makes it so busted in this game. One fun thing about Surf, if you try to use it on Cycling Road... Cycling is fun! Forget surfing! It's just some cute flavor text because you can't get off the bike and start surfing here. Heading south of the Pokémon Center in Fuchsia City, there's a route down here, Route 19 specifically, and 
While we're going to be saving actually surfing here for a while, there are a couple new super rod encounters here and two swimmers to fight, so while I'm fighting them, here are the encounters you can find by the super rod. After you could potentially have a heart attack, of course. Shelter is... not very good. Before evolving, at least, and luckily there's only one thing you really need to do before it evolves. Level it up to level 23 so it can learn Clamp. It's a watertight partial trapping move and is instrumental in what makes Shelter so useful. Upon using a water stone, it will evolve into Cloister. Despite its pretty limited coverage, being locked mostly to normal type moves and stab moves, Cloister has the benefit of being extremely diverse in the tools it has access to despite this. With an absurd defense stat of 180 only being rivaled by Pokemon like Onix or Golem, and the ability to easily fish for freezes with Blizzard, Cloister can easily stick around for a very long time so long as it's kept away from anything obviously threatening. It has access to Clamp to trap opponents with added stab to make it hurt even more than it already does with its unusually high power, and it can use Rest to heal itself, Reflect to increase its absurdly high defense even more, Hyper Beam to deal immense damage and finish off weakened opponents, and Self Destructor Explosion if it needs to KO a wall for another team member. Cloister's moves may be limited, but its abilities are certainly not. Just watch out for any fast special attackers, especially Electric types. Horsey is a painfully generic water type with nothing to set it apart from Pokemon like Vaporeon or even Staryu, which can be found on the exact same route. If you thought Goldeen would be the worst water type, think again. At least it gets access to Horn Drill and a signature move in Waterfall. Horsey can only spam Surf and Blizzard and doesn't even have Speed or Bolt to back that up. It also won't evolve for some 17 levels after being caught. You're better off waiting to catch its evolution if you need to use this lock, but there are significantly better options already available. For example, Staryu. Staryu has an incredible move pool, access to recover through level up, allowing it to heal itself for half its health without the need for items or TMs, and excellent speed, allowing it to tear down entire teams without needing to put in any real work. Access to Thunderbolt gives it the ability to render other water types obsolete, while Ice Beam or Blizzard can easily cover its weakness to the Grass type, and Surf is a powerful option for a move with the same type attack bonus. Psychic is another great option, though Thunderbolt is generally better for coverage. On top of that, Staryu can evolve right away through the use of a Water Stone into Starmie. Starmie's access to Recover and Thunder Wave, along with its high speed, make it one of the most powerful special attackers in the game and its high defense stat also allows it to switch into more threats than you might think at first glance. Since most of its best moves are taught through TM, you also don't need to think too hard before evolving Staryu. Starmie was a menace in competitive Pokémon from Generation 1 all the way until Generation 6. There's a reason for that. It's one of the best Pokémon in the game and is easily worth considering if you haven't picked up a Water or Psychic type. I'm going to go ahead and get ducks back in the party real quick so I can fly back to Saffron City because walking there does not seem particularly fun. <laughs> I've already walked to and from Saffron, Celadon, and all over the place over and over again. So, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a break. Back in Saffron City, we're actually gonna start exploring here a little bit, but before that, there's something I want to do after getting ducks out of the party and lamp back in it. So we've switched over to Pokémon Yellow version here, and you may be wondering why. What trade are we doing that has to be shown on screen? And I think I just answered my own question. So, Haunter. Haunter is a Pokémon that evolves through trading, and Frankly, I think Haunter has had enough time to be badass without evolving. It's time for Haunter to get a chance to really shine. That sprite is a lot worse in Pokémon Yellow. <laughs> And goodbye, HM user Diglett. <laughs> what? Gaster is evolving! <laughs> it 
In exchange, this sprite is a lot better in Pokemon Yellow than Gengar's sprite is in Pokemon Red and Blue. Let's show that off. Goodbye, HM user Diglett. Here comes Gaster. He's coming home. <laughs> that sprite is so doofy. <laughs> oh. It's so bad, but I love it. I love it just the same. Let's check. Gengar's HP is already over 100. Jesus! Special 109! <laughs> Yeah, so you can see a pretty noticeable boost in power from that. Uh... Okay, Gaster. <laughs> yeah, so... We have a pretty powerful weapon on our hands now. Alright. With that done, I am actually- I'm gonna switch Gaster to the lead. This may seem weird because Ryan does need to get some experience, but... Ryan will have his chance to do a lot of fighting in the coming episodes. For now, we're going to give Gaster a debut here. <laughs> okay. First of all, down here, we if we actually walk around Saffron City enough, we'll notice that a lot of rocket grunts are standing around and guarding buildings, although, uh... <laughs> he's taking a snooze. So that guy fell asleep, but a lot of the other buildings in Saffron City are being guarded by Team Rocket Grunts, and we aren't able to get in as a result. Saffron belongs to Team Rocket! Genuinely appears to be the case right now, which is very strange, considering police are confirmed to exist. No way, the police are being ineffective? What do you want? Get lost! So, yeah, there's not a lot we can actually do as far as exploring Saffron goes right now. Boss said he'll take this town! Well, Boss is a character from Metal Gear as far as I know, and... Like... You know, whatever. Ow! Watch where you're walking! Gonna keep kicking you. Hate Team Rocket. I hate them. I genuinely hate them so much in Gen 1, it's unbearable. This house is suspiciously not guarded, though. Mr. Psychic's house. You think they would guard the house of the guy who's obviously a superhero with a name like Mr. Psychic, but... Nope. He is just fine. Wait, don't say a word. You wanted this. TM29 is one of the most important moves in the game. TM29 is Psychic. It can lower the target's special abilities. Psychic is a 90 power psychic type move with 100 accuracy that has a 33% chance of lowering the target's special. Yeah, that's going on, Gaster. This move is incredible. Uh... This will do more than Nightshade almost 100% of the time. Yeah. We're taking Psychic every day. There is no world where Psychic is not a better option. In competitive, Nightshade does have some specific uses over Psychic on a Gengar's moveset, but for our purposes, I'm not really going for the most competitively viable moveset. Saffron City Pokemon Gym, leader Sabrina, the master of Psychic Pokemon. You think if she's the master of the most overpowered type in the game, she'd be able to keep this one dude from blocking her into her gym. Get out of the way! I'm not in the way. <laughs> they are suspiciously not guarding the fighting dojo, and the people inside seem unconcerned with what's happening in their city, so... Maybe we should go inform them what's going on. This is a completely optional challenge, the fighting dojo. It's not a real gym, despite saying gym out front. It's just four trainers and a boss at the end, and yeah, we're going to be taking it on now. Hoo-ha! You're trespassing in our fighting dojo! I am. Intentionally, in fact. Black Belt wants to fight. And if you couldn't guess, they're going to use fighting types, and that backs. <laughs> oh my god. Gengar is so doofy in this game. There's nothing, ne like, necessarily bad about that. Like, it's... <laughs> it's just a little silly looking. I, I already miss Haunter a little bit, just because Haunter looks so cool in this game. <laughs> but... It had to happen eventually. I was always planning on having Haunter evolve, it just... 
it feels sooner than I was ready for. We are really just going to sweep this entire dojo. Not only are our Pokémon higher leveled than everything in here, but like... Gaster is just a powerful Pokémon with a powerful move and a powerful special stat, and there are no fighting types in the game with good special stats. Oof! I give up! I give up! I hear you good! Show me! Black Belt wants to fight. No way. A Black Belt in the fighting type gym? Dojo? I... This place is so weird. I, I do like the concept of there being, like, two gyms in a city. I think that's a neat concept. But there's not really, like, any lore purpose for this being here. There doesn't have to be, obviously. It's fine that there isn't. Like, of course there's going to be a fighting dojo in a country, but... And this is, of course, the only country in the series where there is one, but... Uh... Judge, one point! Our master is a pro fighter. Nothing tough frightens me. I break boulders for training. But I remember hearing somewhere that there's lore that, like, this used to be the Saffron City Gym and they just got booted out by the Psychic Gym. But... I don't know the source of that. That just doesn't sound familiar to me. That might be something in Gold and Silver that's explained. I will admit, I know Gold, Silver, and Crystal a lot less well than I know Red, Blue, and Yellow. And even Red, Blue, and Yellow, I didn't know much before I started doing research. Yo! Stubbed Fingers! That does suck. Not as bad as Stubbed Toes, but Stubbed Fingers do suck. Oh, take your shoes off! Uh, Gaster grew to level 38 and is trying to learn Tree Meter? Gaster, calm down. You already have an almost 100 power psychic move. You do not need another one. Tree Meter is pretty okay. Like, it's a powerful draining move, but I don't know. It, it relies on Hypnosis actually hitting and Gaster surviving to take advantage of if Hypnosis does miss a few times, so... I'd rather just have Psychic, which is almost equally as powerful and has a arguably better secondary effect. I give up! Everyone's just saying they give up. You wait till you see our master! I'm a small fry compared to him! Alright, well, let's go heal up first. Not because we took any damage, but because Psychic only has one PP left. Here we go! I am the Karate Master! I am the leader here! You wish to challenge us? Expect no mercy! Fwaaa! Black Belt wants to fight! What a name for a boss! He is going to lead with Hitmon Lee! Level 37 Fighting Type, knowing the moves Double Kick, Meditate, and Rolling Kick. Only three moves! Do we one-shot with Psychic? The answer is yes. This thing has a special stat of, like, 20. Easily taken down. His last Pokémon, Hitmonchan, level 37, Fighting Type. Knowing the moves Comet Punch, Agility, and Fire Punch. Again, special stat of, like, 20. On top of that, what use would it get out of Fire Punch even if it could hit with it? Comet Punch doesn't affect Gaster. This gym was easy. No wonder they got booted out. Ha! Ah! Beaten! Indeed! I have lost! But I beseech you, do not take our emblem as your trophy! In return, I will give you a prized fighting Pokémon. Choose whichever one you like. Our options... Hitmonlee, the kicking Pokémon. You want the hard-kicking Hitmonlee? Or... Hitmonchan, the punching Pokémon. You want the piston-punching Hitmonchan? Anyone who chooses Hitmonchan is dumb. Or just doesn't know the game that well, which is fine, but... If you do know their stats and you choose Hitmonchan... Oh dear. Hitmonlee. And... I'm sorry. I have been diagnosed with a Terminal Alpha Rad viewer. 
There's no room for Pokemon. Sans was sent to Pokemon Box 3 on PC. That's fine. Let's go over this bio real quick. Despite being the better of the two Pokemon, Hitmonlee still doesn't have much going for it. It's a text out of 120 may look appealing, and 87 speed isn't too bad either, but its only real benefit is High Jump Kick, a move with 85 power and 90 accuracy that deals 1 HP of recoil damage if it misses. This is slightly better than Submission, but not better enough that Hitmonlee is really something that I can recommend. Aside from Meditate, Toxic, and Rest, Hitmonlee can only learn fighting and normal type moves, making it utterly ineffective at dealing with any ghost type Pokemon, and also bad at dealing with anything that isn't normal or rock type. Seismic Toss will at least allow it to hit ghost Pokemon, but otherwise it can't touch them and is likely to go down quickly to just one psychic attack anyways, due to its abysmal special stat. It's not unusable, but there's a lot of better options for fighting Pokemon that we've already seen. <laughs> Enemies on every side! True, that si those sides include Pokemon Yellow, which is where we're about to go now. I am the Karate Master. I am the leader here. You wish to challenge us. Expect no mercy. Fwah! Black Belt wants to fight and is leading with Hitmonlee. Level 37 fighting type, knowing the moves Double Kick, Rolling Kick, Meditate, and Meditate, and Mega Kick. I almost said Meditate, and then I didn't, and I just stumbled on the word instead, whatever. It knows one more move, otherwise it's the same. And Charizard can learn Fly in Pokemon Yellow specifically, so... We'll see how much this does. It's not going to do as much as a special hit would, but it's still enough to knock out, so... who cares? Charizard grows to level 37, not bad. Hitmonchan is level 37, fighting type, doing the moves Comet Punch, Mega Punch, Agility, and Fire Punch. They really just gave them the mega variant of whatever fighting style they prefer. This is the same boss fight. It's equally as easy in both games. Although Hitmonchan actually does get a hit off in this game, so... I don't know. Three hits off, even. He really showed me. Charizard is better at punching than you. Indeed! And I have lost. But, I beseech you, do not take our emblem as your trophy. In return, I will give you a prized fighting Pokémon. Choose whichever one you like. We could go with Hitmonlee if we really wanted to be rational, but... We've shown that Red is definitely more prone to making irrational decisions than I am, due to the necessities of this LP and completing the Pokédex. We are picking Hitmonchan here. The punching Pokémon. I do want the piston punching Hitmonchan. Hitmonlee is Sans, I think this is only natural. Ho! Oh, whoa, rude! Stay and train at karate with us! What goes around comes around! You can only read both emblems if you do this twice, which is not possible normally, so. Yeah, we can't take the other Pokemon. Anyway! Hitmonchan! I've tried to write mostly original thoughts about every Pokémon up to this point, but I'd like to simply read to you Smogon's write-up about Hitmonchan because it sums up everything I could think to say in just the overview alone. This tradition is normally safe for Love Disc, which I think says a lot about Hitmonchan. Hitmonchan has the honor of being the worst fully evolved fighting type in a generation where most fighting types are terrible. Hitmonchan is an awful Pokémon with almost no redeeming qualities. It's much weaker than other physical attackers such as Fero, Pinsir, and Machamp, and it lacks the speed of Fero and the bulk of the latter two to make any meaningful progress. Outspeeding and two-hit KOing Porygon with submission seems nice, but it is completely outclassed in this role by Machamp. Hitmonchan isn't even guaranteed to beat Porygon one-on-one -on -one, since Porygon can paralyze it and use Recover to heal the damage from submission. Although Hitmonchan can KO Porygon if it hits enough submissions in a row, the move's terrible accuracy along with the chance for full paralysis makes this unlikely to happen. Since Hitmonchan struggles to beat even the fighting weak Porygon, it should be no surprise that most of Hitmonchan's other matchups are awful too. 
Its terrible special means it cannot effectively utilize its coverage at all, and it's so specially frail that Drowsy and Abra one-hit KO it with Psychic. Additionally, it's two-hit KO'd by every Fire-type, Water-type, and Ghastly. Agility seems like it's a redeeming quality, as no other fighting type has this move, but it does not make up for all of Hitmonchan's downsides. Despite not being a fighting type, Sea King outclasses Hitmonchan as a late-game agility sweeper thanks to its bulk and decent special. If you need further information from this source, the only listed set for it on Smogon is titled Agility dot 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 sweeper? With that done... This is the wrong street. I hate Saffron City. The big tower here just kind of takes up half the city and makes it so you can't walk down one of the streets. Anyway, with that done, we've taken on the fighting dojo, seen most of what there is to do now that we have access to Surf, aside from actually, like, getting farther in the game than I want to get right now. Evolved Haunter into Gengar and had an excellent debut for him. And nicknamed Tauros and got Body Slam and Hyper Beam on him, so... With that done, next time on Pokémon Generation 1, we're going to be entering Silphco's office building to kick Team Rocket out of Saffron City once and for all. See you guys then.